everyone. My name is Michelle Farley. I am the CEO and founder of Edify Beauty. And this is the amazing Chris Curse. I have been so excited to get to know this <laughs> man. And he is an international beauty expert. And some people are probably wondering what an international beauty expert is. <laughs> no. So Chris, can you please tell us about I, what an international beauty expert is? I can, Michelle. Thank you so much. I mean, it's, it does seem a little extravagant, but it is. And for good reason, right. because I have uh, traveled the world as an international educator, uh, stylist, hairstylist, and I've also worked in marketing for a hair care company. I've launched uh, major brands, and I have been a consultant for other hair care companies to help launch their brands. So I've had a very extensive background in the hair industry, and it has just been a very exciting journey. I think the other piece is I came from corporate America. I was uh, really always doing hair since I was a teenager, and it was my art. Mm -hmm. So, and I never thought I could actually make a living at my art. Mm -hmm. uh, and I realized much later on, after I worked so hard to just get a career in marketing, that I can. And so, mm -hmm. and and then after working. Um, both here in the U.S. and um, in the Netherlands, in Spain, and in South Africa, mm -hmm. actually training trainers. So I actually started training other hair educators on how to best educate stylists on how to do hair. Uh -huh. So that for me, I became even more excited around the industry because I was working with so many industry professionals. Uh -huh. and, uh, and so while, you know, having my occasional clients here or there, but then like you, I started to develop such a passion for them and what they needed and decided to create Chris Kirsten Company and created my own salon situation uh, in the heart of Chicago, uh -huh. downtown. And uh, and so it's just been a, it's been a great journey. And so now I really enjoy creating these great partnerships with different brands like Edify Beauty mm -hmm. so that then I can still exercise a lot of those experiences that I've had throughout the years yeah. and bring in new talent and new information to so many people who need it. Mm -hmm. So what excites you about Edify Beauty? Oh my gosh, so many things. One of the things is the mission and the philosophy. I Once I met you and I realized what this brand stood for, I knew that it was a perfect fit for me. Because over the years, and you and I talked about this extensively, of how we've worked with different companies and different brands, and sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, you they get started and then they fizzle, or they get you excited and then they fizzle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, and then that a lot of times they weren't sustainable. And so what you created with Edify Beauty was something sustainable because it was not just about selling a brand or a system. It was about selling a concept and an idea of beauty for everyone. Mm -hmm. So the, for the consumers and what made me excited about it was you do such a, an excellent job with your clients, but I had the opportunity to come in and input how to attract more stylists mm -hmm. to what Edify Beauty had to offer. So I'm really hoping that I can be this uh, additional voice mm -hmm. for Edify Beauty to really draw in other stylists mm -hmm. that are talented, that I have met along my journey, mm -hmm. uh, to be a part of something that is going to not only benefit them because it's going to provide additional information for them, but give them awesome tools to help them communicate with their uh, stylists, well, no, to their clients. Mm -hmm. And then with their clients, then give them information and products. So I love that you're actually saying, we're not just pigeonholing ourselves into one brand, that we are going to find the best of the best brands that professionals would recommend mm -hmm. to consumers. So it's not this crazy YouTube sensation thing. It's actually something that's more targeted to a professional approach mm -hmm. that actually cares about people loving their hair. We wanted to find what are those things that we really struggle with in our industry and how do we help provide that on the back end. And I think your background and your connection with our industry brings such a richness to what it is that you know we've wanted to create. 
Well, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled because I, I definitely resonate with everything that you just said there. And I think the other piece that I will be able to bring to the table is having a multicultural clientele. Mm -hmm. So being able to introduce that diversity to all of the products and that learnedness mm -hmm. that is sometimes even not available in cosmetology schools. Yes. So so that we're actually able to elevate through Edify Beauty what people learn about hair is hair. Yeah. No matter what ethnicity you are or what type or texture it is, it's still hair. Mm -hmm. And this way we can actually honor that, respect that, and give people the tools and tips necessary to have success with that. Yes. So that no matter who sits in your chair, mm -hmm. and the more diverse the world is getting, mm -hmm. having that kind of diversity in our program and presentation mm -hmm. is gonna be so important. I am so glad that you said that, because that brings up, my brain went down all these rabbit holes. And, you know, that was, that was something that I was, um, very passionate about when I first started doing hair was I was like, who knows who's gonna sit in my chair? I wanna be able to find not just what was taught to me, but also the things that, you know, when you go to, they teach you how to cut straight hair. Mm -hmm. You get it wet, you comb it straight, you mm -hmm. cut it in a straight line, like it's very one box, one size fits all. Mm -hmm. But that's not how, that's not necessarily best for curly hair. Right. And so I was lucky enough early in my career to find stylists that specialized in curly hair and I was going, what are you doing? What is that? Right. Not everyone has straight hair. It makes sense. Why didn't they teach us this? Well, when we were in school, like how do we deliver this to everybody? Right. And I'm glad we're having this conversation because that's something, unfortunately, the industry as a whole, they represent dollars. They represent who's, who's spending the most money and what does this little tiny itty bitty demographic need or want? Right. And then everything is around confusing the masses to pump up more money, right. not really delivering solutions for everybody. And I feel like there's a lot of niches in the market that are they're missing either advice mm -hmm. or they're missing, I guess, those things to help them achieve what they're wanting. Does that make sense? It does make sense. But I think that that's where you actually got me excited with Edify Beauty because you wanted to make sure that we customized products for people, mm -hmm. that we help them find the best products that they needed for their hair type and texture. Mm -hmm. So that because you wanted to broaden that scope and not just say one size fits all with this shampoo and conditioner, but to say this one is specifically gonna be good for your hair type because of X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. You actually took a more in-depth approach. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was inspiring. Because so many people say, let me just create something as long as it smells good and it detangles, we're all good. Mm -hmm. And you said, no, no, no. That may not be the best thing for you because this may be the best thing for you. So the, the time and intensity that you've taken to find the right products that work for different hair types and textures is so important and I think that that's going to be the key difference with Edify Beauty is mm -hmm. that you will edify beauty because it is going to be an informed choice mm -hmm. for what you need for your hair. Everybody deserves to have good hair. Some mm -hmm. people can afford it, some people can afford it. We've been talking about you know how do we price the boxes that are affordable enough that people get value out of them but it's also something that is a business model that's sustainable. How do we find that balance? And I was going, some people have a lot of money to spend on their hair, and some people don't have very much money to spend on their hair. And I was like, what if we can present something that's kind of like a balance system where when you buy your box, if you saved all of this money by not having to pump into this product graveyard, you're now you're getting like a concise delivery every month, so you're saving all this money on your hair, you can give back so that people who can't really afford good hair care can now also afford boxes. I like it. And so, that's where I was saying this, I felt like this kind of ties that whole, like this campaign of every person deserves to have good hair. Mm -hmm. And so if you're somebody who can, you know, we're helping everybody, but if we're helping you save time and money that you can now give back to other people, we can help a whole lot more people learn to love their hair. And I think that that is so important right now because we've been talking about how people need love. People need self love and to be giving love and we as hairstylists have seen the power impact of 
your hair, that transformation of, you know, I came in and I'm having a crap day and, you know, I'm mad at my kids, I'm mad at my coworkers, I'm mad at all these people. And I sit down and you just transformed me and I walked out and I feel beautiful and I feel happy. Nothing changed, you know, my coworkers didn't get any better, nothing got any better, but I feel good and so I feel happy. And I think when people start to feel happy inside, then they can spread that outwardly. And so it starts, you know, I don't know how to change the other parts of the world, but I know that hair is an innate part of our human emotion. People want, you can go back to the cavemen and they had combs, like the Egyptians had hair color. Like we want to have our hair look good and represent us in a good way. And if we can't change the world. Well, let's, let's, let's actually dive into that just a little yeah. bit because I think with you being who you are, um, you are uh, a wife, a mom, and an entrepreneur, and a woman, and a hairstylist. So how, how do you feel that you can inspire others to actually feel better about their hair because you because now you actually represent both sides of the coin mm -hmm. so that for me it's different because um as a male hairstylist i actually work with a lot of women all the time and i watch that i see that glow in their eyes when they kind of go wow this is great this is great but then yeah. you now not only create those moments for women, but you are that woman mm -hmm. who actually sees this. So, so talk to me about how you see your hair and how it impacts who you are in your life so that we can understand what is that importance that hair has for a woman who is maneuvering through the world and then how can we impact that positively? Well, I think I have a really unique perspective on that. Um, I think I've shared with you before, my mom's a hairstylist. So okay. she always kept my hair very nicely groomed. And I was a tomboy, so I ran around and rough and tumble. And so I didn't really do my hair until I got to hair school. And I was like, I love doing hair, but you can't do hair if you look like you just rolled out of bed. So I had to learn how to do my hair. And so I've been where my consumer my clients have been like I've I've been right. where I've been in their shoes where I'm going I need to make my hair look good I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on it I don't know what to buy I'm buying things I'm trying tutorials but it looks like they skipped five steps like I go do you have five hands like how in the world did you get this look and I watched that progression as I became a stylist and as I was learning these things um, for my clients how my hair became much more manageable, much more easier. And I was like, oh, it's those little tiny things that like, I knew mm. how to put bobby pins into my hair, but like knowing how to connect the two bobby pins so that they don't slide out so I don't have 15 bobby pins in there, I've only got two bobby pins in there. It's those little tiny things that I wouldn't have known if I wasn't studying this as a professional, but it made my life easier. And so those are the tips that I started to convey to my clients where I'm going, hey, this helped me. I think this will help you. And then right. branching out and trying to find those same kinds of solutions for hair types that weren't like mine. Right. So that then, so now as you transcend from being an actual consumer, if you will, mm -hmm. um, and, and actually having the experience with your mom, and you've now transitioned into being the stylist and the creator of these experiences for other women, what then are you taking from your own personal experience that you feel is so necessary um, to transcend and give to other women for their hair needs? Are you asking what am I delivering as a professional or yes. what am I delivering as? As a stylist, as a as stylist. A stylist. Whether, so, that, so that because when you talk about how it felt for you and how it impacted you and, and those little things, then what what is that? overlying message that you really want to make sure that people understand about Edify Beauty and and the experience that they're going to have. Okay. So I said I struggled as a consumer. I felt that once I became a professional, I wouldn't struggle anymore. Mm -hmm. And what I found was there was still a lot of confusion. Instead of shopping at Sephora, I'm shopping at Cosmoprof or Salon Centric. 
and it's the same, lots of aisles and marketing and salespeople, and I'm going, I don't know what to believe until I use it. And then my career progressed to where I was an educator, and I was like, now I'm gonna know what to buy. And I thought I did after I worked for the first one, but then I started working for other companies and I found conflicting advice. And that's where, as a professional, I was going, my con like, the average everyday person has, there's no way that they can know what's good for them unless they've tried it. Right. And after studying the industry and studying, like I see the dissatisfaction with the people, but why and where is that coming from? I've been able to identify that it's because a lot of people don't know what to buy and they don't know how to use it. And the market is oversaturated and there's all of this diversification of products that's caused this confusion. <laughs> and now people are going, I don't know, I'm fine and I'm curly and I'm color treated and what do I buy? And after going through all of this stuff, I was like, I've spent all of my career studying this. Let me help you not have to go spend all of this time. You don't have to go to all of these tutorials where it's just, you know, somebody else who's also trying to figure it out. I've studied it and now I can deliver this information to you in, in an insightful and practical way. Okay. And so this is actually really, really helpful. I think something just happened for me. A light bulb just went off. Um, with my background of working in the hair industry and, and on the marketing side and that when you work with uh, different hair companies and what everyone sells is a system mm -hmm. and we know that everyone says okay they create the system and their system works and um, and they they test it and everything is based on if you use this shampoo and this conditioner and mm -hmm. this leave-in then this is how our system works mm -hmm. but in reality what most consumers do and stylists they're cherry pickers mm -hmm. so they actually will say well i actually like that product but not that one and i like that one and not that one mm -hmm. and then they they substitute mm -hmm. so it sounds like that's where you're going now with kind of developing this customization is that instead of the the consumer having to figure out how to cherry pick for themselves that you're actually looking into what are their real hair care needs and whatever system actually has the product that they need that in some way you're picking mm -hmm. and you're able to execute an informed decision around this is why based on x y and z you should be using this collection of goods, mm -hmm. which would mean that it may not be all of one system, mm -hmm. but it may actually include multiple systems mm -hmm. or pieces mm -hmm. of a multiple system. Is mm -hmm. that accurate? Or? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, I feel like my philosophy behind the chair has always been to deliver whatever's going to help solve my client's problem. Okay. So I want their loyalty because I'm their hairstylist. I want them to come in for cuts and colors and for their service, the retail side of it was something that I learned was a support. And so I'm wanting to provide them a recommendation that, you know, if you buy it, great. If you don't buy it, great. But I gave you the tools and resources to know what to buy and how to buy it. Do you find that with certain lines, they're hero products? Yes. And that's and what, then, okay, okay, yes. And that's what, okay, so I found, you know, over the years you try the lines and you have to buy the whole starter package, like you said, the whole mm -hmm. kit. And I find that it was always like, I felt like a waste because I would find two or three things that I really, really loved, and the mm -hmm. rest of it I'm like, it's okay. And mm -hmm. some of it I didn't really love. And so then I would be like, okay, but I do love the concept of that, and I do need one of those, and so then I go on this hunt. And so I'm constantly hunting, 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 hunting mm. to find what are those things that are gonna solve all of these problems. And then sometimes you get to the point where you're like, all right, I have a pretty good product offering. And then unfortunately, a lot of times products get sold or they get reformulated or things change and then you have to hunt, 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 hunt and try to find those things again. And right. so you're buying all these starter packages and all of these like lines to figure out what are those couple things. And so if we can take, I think the expertise or the, not the expertise, but if we can take that knowledge of all of the things that I've tried to narrow down to this point and all of the things that you've tried to mm -hmm. narrow down to this point. And then we can pull in other experts that we know really value being able to contribute value to their customers. So like they're not, would you they're say, for, I guess, solutions. Okay. Would you say it's safe to say that we're really, really looking for those hero products? Yes. 
Okay. Yes. So, we're looking for brands that perform, or not brands, but we're looking for those products that perform that are tied to brands with integrity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and that it could either be a full system or just a part of a system. Yes. Okay. So if, it's, if the system works, like there's been things that I've worked where I'm like, no, it works good when you use As this, a this, and this. You yes. can use the system. There are those where yes. you absolutely need to follow the entire system to get the result. Yes. And then there are those lines where you can do the cherry picking and mm -hmm. um, actually get a win out of um, a few items without having the whole thing, mm -hmm. okay. And so so that now what you're suggesting is the idea of helping a consumer navigate through that. Mm -hmm. So that, and using your experience and expert judgment to find that solution. Okay, I like it. I think that it's a, I, I think it's a great concept. I think people would find a lot of value in it. Um, because as people are torn with what to use and how to use it, that uh, you're not only offering the suggestions, but you're also going to be demonstrating how-tos. Mm -hmm. So how do you actually make it work? Right, and that goes back to the uh, premise of it's not just what products to buy, but it's how to use them. Sometimes there's mm. really great products in our under the sink graveyard. We just didn't know how to use them right the first time. And so if you're using the right thing, but in the wrong way, you're not going to get the result that you're looking for. That's true. And, and that's something else too, is I think, you know, with the education that we are including with the products, not only are you learning how to use this product, but a lot of the education is general. So, you know, we'll tell you this is something that is specific to this product, or this is just how you apply gel to your hair, or this is how you apply a cream to your hair, or here's how you should be applying volumizing foam, like at your mm -hmm. roots or here. It's a basic concept that's gonna become universal. So whether you're using that foam or a different foam in the future, you're applying it the same way. Does that make sense? I mean, we know that it a does. stylist, once we get comfortable using a product, right. We can pick up one from this line or one from that line or one from this line and we have the underlying concept and then it's just playing going, oh, do I like how this feels or oh, do I like, you know, what it, what the sheen was at the end or, you know, we're kind of experimenting and we're comparing the nuances, but the application is the same. Yes. Yes. So how do, how do you actually build that circle of trust with that client who needs to now understand that you know their hair and their hair type and texture and you're going to navigate them to the right resources like so yeah. so how does that process actually take flight it were it has it comes down to asking the right questions okay so i always tell stylists it has to do with the consultation i was like i've seen so many great stylists that did a great haircut with an unhappy client at the end, where you're mm -hmm. going, why are they unhappy? It was a great haircut, it was a great this, but it's not what they were wanting, and I think it was because there was a miscommunication in the, in the consultation. And so, over the years of this, trying to figure out what people fight with and how to solve those problems, I've gotten a very um, streamlined question process of here are the questions that I need to ask you to understand your lifestyle and your skill level and your hair type and what are you needing uh, right. and so asking those questions and having them you know give us truthful as truthful and honest answers they can allows us to pick those products that we know other people who fight these kinds of things and other people who have these kinds of things that we've seen with our experience we can now share that knowledge forward does that make sense okay Okay. And I think, oh, that was when you mentioned the questionnaire. Uh -huh. So that then the questionnaire actually... Yeah, so then, so either a consultation, that would be like a virtual consultation or an in, in salon consultation, like what I do behind the chair, mm -hmm. or now we've made it virtual. So you can take an online consultation and you can Got answer it. all of the questions that I would typically ask my clients at, when they sit down in the chair. Um, and then we actually take it as real people and go through these answers and say, okay, this is these, you know, because of the way they answer these questions, here are the products that match their okay. needs. So it's kind of like going to the doctor's office where you just actually need to provide enough quality information about you and 
who you are and who, what your hair and scalp needs are. And then we're able to then pull it together and then make a an informed decision about which direction you should go. I wanted to share some of those those stories. You know, when I just said the like that transformation that happens with your clients, you lit up because you remembered like you had that memory mm -hmm. of all of those times that you've seen your clients light up behind the chair. So mm -hmm. like what are some of those stories are like do do you have any stories of that impactful change that you've seen behind the chair? Absolutely. I think one one um, in particular for me was when I was working with uh, clients who, because I've had several clients who have gone through um, chemo mm -hmm. uh, treatments. Mm -hmm. And so having hair and hair being such an important part of who they are mm -hmm. and, and their presentation of themselves and the fear and anticipation of losing it. Mm -hmm. um, and having no control over that mm -hmm. um, and wanting to create something that would make them still feel like themselves as they were battling um, mm -hmm. uh, cancer and fighting for not just their survival but their aesthetic. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I did was I said, please bring in pictures of when you loved your hair the most. Uh -huh. So that, and that became my inspiration for creating their wigs. Okay. So that I would then develop their wigs based on their most favorite image of themselves. Uh huh. Because I felt that that would inspire them. Yeah. I also understood, because after doing some training with the American Cancer Society, um, I learned that the biggest struggle was the idea that. Um, it's actually, it could be a bit more painful than people acknowledge. Mm -hmm. And that there's the physical discomfort that you have with losing your hair, but then there's also the emotional pain of finding long strands on your pillow, yeah. long strands in the shower. So I often encouraged uh, clients to cut their hair shorter mm -hmm. so that they change their look in general. Mm -hmm. Um, to prepare and anticipate so that then finding shorter strands on your pillow or shorter strands in the shower mm -hmm. became less devastating than longer strands. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was how to create that um, emotional comfort mm -hmm. around it. So knowing that so many women think of their hair as their crown mm -hmm. uh, and in such a defining way, um, the other was when I actually started to master hair extensions and when I would work with clients who were battling male pattern baldness. Mm -hmm. And now having to create um, extensions and cover-ups to provide fullness and volume and make them look like themselves when they were the most happy with the way they their hair looked. So for me, it's been that moment of how can I help someone feel great about themselves who may have stopped feeling great about their hair. So mm -hmm. when you talk about everyone loving their hair, it really resonates with me mm -hmm. because I really, really, really want everyone to love their hair Mm -hmm. um, even if it's imperfect. Mm -hmm. And then I look for how I can make your imperfections at least pleasing to you. Mm -hmm. And and what are the things that I can do? So if it's too dry or if it's too oily or if it's too short or whatever you feel your issue is, how can I come to the rescue? Mm -hmm. And in some way, um, I think that that's why we're uh, hair physicians mm -hmm. and that uh, we actually like physicians are constantly learning and growing and finding new techniques and we're practicing and I think that's the biggest thing that a lot of people forget hairstylists are practitioners mm -hmm. that everybody who sits in our chair is different mm -hmm. so their goals or how they see themselves is different yeah. 
and being able to create that circle of trust mm -hmm. um, and creating that moment of love and happiness. And I think we've all been there. I, 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 one of my devastating moments was when I thought I had done something really magnificent on someone and she hated it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I was more devastated than she was uh, because yeah, yeah. I kept thinking, well, I think it's fabulous, you know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. and in our mind, she was like, ah, oh, yeah, not so much. Uh -huh. um, but again, sometimes our roles are so not just about their hair. Mm -hmm. It's about mm -hmm. the importance of their hair to them. Yes. What does it mean to them? Yes. How do they navigate in the world with their hair? So in my consultations, one of the things that I always, always do, no matter what, is I always start my consultations with, what are your hair goals? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to go with your hair? What do you see your hair doing? If you had the perfect head of hair, what would that look like to you? Mm -hmm. This is great for two reasons. One, I get to see exactly what they really want. Mm -hmm. And two, I get to see exactly how crazy they are. Because <laughs> sometimes they want something that'll never happen. Yeah, yes. Yes. It is absolutely out of the question. Yeah. And so I get to understand what is their level of understanding mm -hmm. with what is possible for their hair right. versus what is possible for me to do to their hair. Right. And um, so and when, once I'm there, so the, so the whole questionnaire piece is so exciting for me because I thought, oh, yes, yes, absolutely. Because it gathers information mm -hmm. so that I understand how they see themselves mm -hmm. and how they see their hair and what's reasonable mm -hmm. because there are those people and I have to have those hard conversations yeah. when I know realistically what they want will never happen with their existing situation right so yep. so yeah so so to to your point it's 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 that idea of finding the love in what you have. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I think in my consultations, I've wanted, I've included lifestyle just as much as I have their hair. Mm -hmm. Because I want to know how much time do you spend in the morning? Do you blow dry or do you air dry? Do you, you know, how often are you wearing it straight? How often Absolutely. do you wear it really? How do you, what is your lifestyle? What are, you, what are your aspirations? And what are you, yeah, what are you really willing to do? to achieve those things yes. and how do we kind of bridge that gap and find that balance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we become hair whisperers too because your <laughs> hair tells on you. Yes. So if you're using too much heat, we'll know. Yes. If you're not using enough moisture, we'll know. Mm -hmm. Your hair actually tells us a story yep. separate from whatever story you tell about your hair. Right. <laughs> and so, yes. so it's about being able to create the same story <laughs> mm -hmm. and make the stories actually synonymous and, and, and functioning mm -hmm. in on their behalf. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In, in authenticity. Well, and that's a wording to everybody too. Don't try to fool your hairdresser. Cause I've heard really bad stories about that too. Like people who've wanted to do crazy color or to do, you know, yeah. chemical services back to back and their stylist says no. And then they go to another stylist and yeah. there's hair chunks flying out. Oh, doing absolutely. Blow dry, so. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It's very possible. So, we, so, yes. So we know. And if you're really, really good, it's probably not going to turn out good. Yeah. No. Yeah. Sometimes the commitment to change for your hair um, is a bit more mental mm -hmm. than it is physical. Mm -hmm. that with our physical bodies, it's harder to sort of make those transformations and make them long lasting and then feel comfortable than with your hair. Mm -hmm. um, that you can actually make subtle changes and do some things and enhancements. I mean, because, you know, well, I mean, now people are enhancing their bodies, you know, boob jobs and hips and <laughs> everything else that they're adding. Um, but it's, it's a lot more um, intensive labor intensive in order to do it. And sometimes the things that we can do, we have a lot of options. So 
again, if you want longer hair, you don't necessarily have to grow it out. Mm -hmm. You can actually get extensions or you can get clip-ins. Mm -hmm. um, so that there are ways in which you can can do things um, that are, are subtle changes to just uh, create a new you. I'm glad that you said the extensions thing too because I think that um, for a lot of my clients, they didn't realize that that was something that they could do. Like they, mm -hmm. they felt like that's something that movie stars do, or you know, people in in the public eye, or people who can afford you know to have hairdressers that that do this for them. They didn't realize that they can come in and learn how to do clip-ins and have like a different set of hair for different looks all every day. Mm -hmm. Like, and, you know, and one of the things that I I tell a lot of my assistants and 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 that work with me. Um, when, in, when there's anything that I want to introduce or sell to my clients, I often will um, have them try it out. So, mm -hmm. for example, if you wanted to encourage your clients to try extensions more, mm -hmm. um, I would say add a few clip-ins into your own hair. Mm -hmm. Now, you obviously don't need clip-ins, mm -hmm. but you could actually use them for some color. Some pieces, yep. So if you actually added some red ones in or mm -hmm. some purple, just add some pops of color, and they're like, oh my God, did you color your hair? Oh no, these are just clip-ins. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. Before you know it, you're selling colored clip-ins. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, because what happens is they see you as aspirational. They see what you do and they go, wow, that is awesome. Let me try that. Mm -hmm. And uh, And I think that that's where we are, we we support beauty mm -hmm. and that because we inspire people to think about beauty and when you talk about sort of the caveman i i think about like what's happening right now even with um everything for <laughs> the coronavirus and then we actually think about um the depression in years past the number one selling product during the depression was red lipstick mm -hmm. Because when people could not afford to do anything else, they still wanted to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so, which speaks to that voice you said around why why is hair so important? And when your husband was saying, you just think it's important because you're into hair. No, it matters. Because if I can't do anything else for my husband, I can still look good. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that... If I can't get the perfect meal on the table, mm -hmm. I can still be beautiful mm -hmm. so that I can still find that joy and happiness in our household because I, I look my best. Mm -hmm. And I think that that matters mm -hmm. to people is how, how can I still look my best and um, hair and makeup become part of the way mm -hmm. that, that women en enhance their beauty mm -hmm. and say I'm I'm present and I I feel more special now because I've done these extra special things. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I roll my hair at night to so it look good tomorrow, not because I want to look crazy when I go to bed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no one likes the process. Though. Right. Right. Um, there was something that you said about what did you say? Um, Oh, I've talked to a lot of my clients about this, and I feel like a lot of um, women resonate with that whole idea of when your hair looks really good, it doesn't matter what you're wearing or if you have makeup on. If my hair is amazing, I feel good when I'm walking around the house, even though no one sees me. Right. If my makeup is done and my hair looks, or and my clothes are amazing, but my hair is like flat or it's doing something weird all night long, every time I go to the bathroom, I'm going, oh my gosh, my hair. Oh my gosh, my hair. You know? And so I was like, that. That was another piece that I, f I feel is so amazing about how quick that transformation happens. Mm -hmm. Like for me, I'm a very um, ADD creative type person. Like, and so projects, you know, people who know me as far as like my house projects or like paintings or anything creative, I have a lot of half done projects. So hair has been a great profession for me because I get to be creative but there's a finite amount of time. I have a goal that I have to accomplish in this amount of time. She's gonna come in, I'm gonna do this, and then she's gonna go out. So I get to be creative, I do this, and it's this instant gratification because at the end, 
I'm happy with what it is that I've created. I get to see how it makes her feel and how she walks out the door and how she carries herself when she walks out the door. You know, and it's, I'm sure you get texts all the time from your clients where they're like, I just wanted to tell you I'm having a great hair day. Like, who does that for their accountant? Right. Like, you don't just get a random text that's like, thank you so much. Like, I'm feeling really good about myself today. Right. And it's all because of you, you know? Yeah, no, it's true. But I think that what happens is, I think hair is the perfect finish. Mm -hmm. So, you're not going to put on a ball gown and go to a gala um, with your hair disheveled. Mm -hmm. Because in some way you feel unfinished. Mm -hmm. But you could have on a tank top and shorts with amazing hair and still feel as fabulous as if you were in the ball gown. Yeah. Hair is the finish. So that when someone is in something glamorous, and their hair's not done, they don't feel complete. Mm -hmm. um, but if they are, if their hair is done and they're in just shorts and a tank top, then they're still gonna feel glamorous. So, so that I think that when people like your husband sometimes think, why is hair so important? Why does that matter? It's because for so many women and even now men, I mean, look at these men yeah. now. Yeah that are doing these fancy toupees and you know, partial yeah. wig units and because they're they're going, okay, I still want to look my best mm -hmm. and I feel like I look my best mm -hmm. when my hair is finished, when mm -hmm. it is a complete look. I feel in some way that we have a total look. Think about it. Whenever you've put your hair up in a bun or ponytail, have you ever thought, Oh, this is my finished look. Probably not. Not usually. No. Not usually. Mm -hmm. It's when you've actually styled it and it's down when you thought, okay, I've actually done something to my hair mm -hmm. and and I now have a finished look. Mm -hmm. So that usually when we're getting out of our face or that that's just to maintain it and keep it moving. Mm -hmm. But when we actually make that effort to do something to style it. Mm -hmm. And so what I love, 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 love about what we're doing with Edify Beauty is we're saying, hey, we don't want you to leave out the professional. Mm -hmm. We actually so appreciate you, especially now in these times when you can find the time and the finances to come in and have a professional experience. Mm -hmm. However, we also recognize that everyone economically can't, time-wise can't, mm -hmm. and but they still want to look good mm -hmm. and they still want the finish. Mm -hmm. So that's where we come into play with Edify Beauty to say, you're still going to get professional supporting your efforts at home. Mm -hmm. So that as consumers and the extra bonus is we even have information on there for stylists. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that in that way, this is great w ways and tips that you can communicate with your, your, your Consumer. consumers. Mm -hmm. And, and also learn other tricks of the trade mm -hmm. so that because now we're, we have less classes available and mm -hmm. things with everything happening. So we become a great resource for not only the consumers, but also other professionals to find ways to stay connected to their consumers mm -hmm. when they don't have a chance to make it into the salon. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Chris, for coming. <sighs> I cannot tell you what a treat it is to have you on this um, video, but also a part of our team. And you guys will be seeing a whole lot more of Chris. Um, if you guys have any questions <laughs> for us, if you liked um, any pieces of her story, want to know more about anything, please comment or subscribe down below. Um, and thank you for watching. We hope you have a beautiful, happy day. Absolutely.